Good evening and welcome to Tripping on Legends. I am Chris Balzano. And I'm Ella Balzano. And welcome to episode 87, which uh, we titled... Uh, Tripping on Questions. Tripping on Questions, which I thought was really kind of old school, because if you followed us in the past, you know that um, we used to see the this and then you get closer. We I used to we used to use that phrase all the time. Not tripping with uh, on questions. Tripping but on kids. Tripping we would on say pants. tripping on bullet like as a joke. We would say tripping on pants. You know, up oh, tripping on cauliflower. Although I don't ever remember tripping on pants. Tripping on pants. Things like that. And so it was a really uh, nice, cool, old school um, callback. So uh, in between us, that was you. I'm with you. Um, let me start out by saying that you can actually check out those episodes. We say episode 87, but there are close to almost 130 wow. Tripping on Legends episodes. Um, some of them are interviews. Some of them are the live shows. We should not number the live shows. So they're actually, instead of being only 87, there are a ton that you can find you. on iTunes, Google Play. You can find it on Stitcher. You can find it pretty much everywhere you get your podcast and please which is kind of uh, a theme that's going to run from t for, on tonight's show is leave us a comment leave us a review on those things and of course you can ask any kind of questions you want or leave any kind of comments on any of our social media so this is going to be your 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 trivia time right mm -hmm. yes what is the website that we're filming on no just a website that for tripping on legends tripping on legends .com. Trippingonlegends.com. Excellent. And what is our <laughs> what is our Twitter? Spooky Tripping. Spooky Balzano. Spooky Excellent. Tapping. And what is our Instagram? I know that. Spooky Tripping. Spooky Tripping and Spooky Tripping at gmail.com. And feel free to ask us a question, right? Uh, which is kind of the the theme and the, and the drive of tonight's show uh, is the feedback that I've gotten. Uh, and some of the questions that I've gotten that I don't get to, right? When we, even when I do a live show, I have, I don't have a script, it's not scripted, but I do have a format that I want to do. I, I want to talk about this, I want to talk about this, I want to talk about this. Sometimes, especially the Instagram, although we argued about this, uh, people ask questions uh, or make comments that I can't necessarily respond to or on the Facebook Live because we do go um, live every Tuesday from 8.30 to 9 on Facebook, right? And then we share it to Tripping on Legends, so <laughs> it's trippingonlegends.facebook.com, as well as going live on what station? Instagram. No, what station do we go live on? Insta TV. Excellent, right, Midnight <laughs> FM. Midnight, where it's always midnight. So you can get the, you can get the, um, <laughs> you can pick us up any, on any of those things. And I'm actually thinking that I might end up going just audio only on uh, on every other Tuesday, only because it's really hard to, to get a show together, which is kind of what happened today. So I was um, writing like a madman this weekend. I shouldn't say that. I was trying to get things done. Um, and there were several, there were <laughs> several different legends that I touched upon that I was like, ooh, this would be interesting. Ooh, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, and, um, I didn't get to it. I didn't get to look into it enough. And rather than doing a show, especially a show that's going to be an hour and a half where I don't really present the legend uh, fully, I was like, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Am I going to not have a show tonight? And I was like, you know what? Like, why don't I have a little bit of a Q&A? Because people have, especially recently, been sending me stuff. And when I say sending me stuff, sometimes it's on some of those social media things. Sometimes it's a review on Amazon. Uh, sometimes it is... A, a review of the podcast, like on, on, a, on a something like iTunes. And I just wanted to, I thought it would be interesting to kind of address some of those things. So I was like, you know what, how about if I just do a show? I knew that you were going to be potentially coming on tonight, and so it would be really good to get um, your perspective on the question and then my perspective on the question and kind of see if maybe, you know, someone from a different generation looks at some of this stuff differently. That's deep. So you don't, you have no idea some of the questions that we're gonna ask ahead of time. Even if you were to look at my notes right here, 
you would not be able to tell what Why do you hate St. Augustine, Dad? <laughs> I like we'll, get, Saint, we'll get to I that. I like to St. Augustine. Um, and I want to start off by saying this, because I absolutely love... Hello, Jen. Hello, Jeremy. And hello, Laureen, of course. Um, I don't know why I said her name like that. Laureen. Um, I found it really interesting. One of the questions I posed uh, today... And it's not the first question I'm going to tackle, but um, was a review for the podcast on iTunes, which uh, said, you call yourself the Puck Wudgie guy and claim any credit for spreading the Puck Wudgie legend is stealing the cultural property of the Wampanoag people who are victims of genocide by Europeans. Um, which I thought was, was not a really good review of the show, but, you know, a, a, I, I'm glad to say that I had... Um, a whole bunch of people on social media on the different platforms jumping to my defense. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you have to tell them your response to the I will, I will. We'll get to that question. Um, but I thought the interesting thing for me at least is I'm not going in any of the things that I'm going to address tonight, I'm going to offer my opinion. And so I'm not going to get defensive. I was just really impressed. I really want to put it out there to those of you who listen to the show or who follow me on social media who were so quick to defend. Um, Dark Woods, like Jeremy is doing, or um, me in general, because I think that's, that's very flattering. But let's address the issues rather than addressing like whether or not I'm an idiot um, or arrogant and stupid. I think we already know the Do you wait? Okay, so question. forget we don't. Let's get to the puck. What, do you think I'm arrogant and stupid? Whoa, she hesitates. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's good, that's good, that's good. Um, but today is a very special birthday as well. Dolly Parton. So it's time that we, we address that. So it is Dolly Parton's birthday. What is your favorite Dolly Parton song? Because I was actually surprised by this when I asked you. What is your favorite Dolly Parton song? Jolene. That's not what you said. I said Jolene's... 9 to 5 and I said Jolene. Okay, nine to five, I thought was amazing, amazing. Wow, Dad, um, you're so. I am. I am gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go with um, traditional. I, I, I will always love you is, is my favorite. I mean that is ridiculous, but that is not the birthday that I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was that's an important birthday, and we 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 tossed out you know Happy Dolly Day the and everything like that. Annoying kid on my bus. It's his birthday. Okay, no, not the the annoying kid on your bus has not been a, a heavy influence. Shout out to you, Christopher. Um, you suck. Has not uh, has not <laughs> influenced me. What's his name, Christopher? Christopher. Okay. He's you should have been with him. But um, he's like eight years old. Someone more important turns forty today. You no. <laughs> okay, so let me let me take a, a Janis Joplin would have been is it Janis Joplin's birthday? She would have been much older than forty though. Janis Joplin. Um, ah, Janis Joplin. Fictional character. The fictional character. Heavy influence in our lives. Harry Potter. Nope. <gasps> oh, Buffy Summers! I heard you talking about this on the phone. Yes. Buffy Summers. Buffy Summers. It is Buffy Summers' fortieth birthday, um, and I would say. You know, when I list my paranormal influences, I'm not even kidding that I list Buffy the Vampire Buffy, Slayer Buffy. high on that list. Buffy. I genuinely think that it is probably the best uh, supernatural paranormal show that has ever been on. Can you think of one that you like better? We're going to start with some easy softball questions. Like, can you? Because people ask me all the time, like, what did you watch growing up? What do you like to watch now? So, what? BuzzFeed. What? Oh, BuzzFeed? BuzzFeed? Okay. <laughs> so, you can say it loud. Say it loud because it's important because it's, it's something BuzzFeed. I want. BuzzFeed! She likes uh, BuzzFeed, right? She likes BuzzFeed Unsolved. More, more specifically, you like BuzzFeed Unsolved. And even more specific than that, you like BuzzFeed Unsolved. I like both of them. I like BuzzFeed Unsolved True Crime and BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural. Okay, Supernatural. Um, Vampire Diaries, we've got some people say. Uh... Oh my word, you're downing that. Um, thank heavens it's sleepy time, T. <laughs> what, what do you like about Shane and Ryan? And if you haven't watched BuzzFeed um, Unsolved, what are you doing? look at it, right? 
Um, I think that it's it's a real if you take it in the spirit of which they're making it, which I think they do. I think it is a really um, important show, right? And I think that it really introduces people who wouldn't necessarily be into seeing all these things, introduces them to some pretty famous places and kind of the entry level um, paranormal investigating aspect of things. What do you like about it, other than the swearing? Everything. Okay, so we don't talk like that because that's how that's how simpletons respond. Simpletons. Oh my god, I like everything about it. Uh, you have to actually, they're like, funny, and mm-hmm. I like the way they do things. Okay, so give me something because this feeds um, this feeds into uh, Buzz feeds into, if you will, the <laughs> first question that I'm going to ask tonight, which is, um, what? have you done out in the field that is different and the same, I guess, too, from BuzzFeed? Like, how do you think that has kind of molded? Now, you went, uh, before we did this, you went to um, Corishan. Yeah. You went to um, the Singing Manatee River, which I just discovered was not posted. So I actually posted that. um, I actually posted that write-up of the travel log of the Manatee River. I can't believe a year and a half ago I wrote it and I never posted it. Really? Mm-hmm. So I posted it this wow. week. It's getting good traction. It's good. Thank you, everyone, who's, who's doing it. Um, you did watch those two. You went to those two locations before you ever watched that show and saw kind of how investigators approach something, right? So those are not legend trippers. Those are investigators. How do you think we do things differently? And, and do you like their approach more or my approach more? I know what the answer to this question would be. <laughs> uh, well, tripping on legends. You don't have to turn sorry, the mic every sorry. time. It's like, now I got something to say, so I'm going to move that mic right to me. Um, uh, tripping on legends is more about like the history mm-hmm. about stuff. And uh, BuzzFeed is more like, hey, Ellie. Uh, BuzzFeed is more like, investigating not history right and what which do you like better like do you like it's okay it's okay you're not going to offend me buzzfeed you like buzz so i cannot compete with shane and and ryan at all um but the interesting thing is is that like i i agree with margie that i enjoy their um their dynamic that one is a skeptic and the other one is like every single thing is completely haunted and um is scared by everything. I mean, Ryan like pees when I everything. Watch yeah, an and and I like that part of it because it explores it. Although I do think that Shane is too skeptical. Like everything is not anything. Um, so that's kind of like sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, but um, it brings us to to our first question, the first question that I get, and I get this a lot, and I want your opinion on it, and I want what you think about it, and then I'm going to kind of give mine. Um, and I get, I think people would be um, maybe even surprised if you've actually listened to the show, you've watched our videos. I get a lot of skepticism of uh, why do I allow kids to go to haunted locations? Oh, it teaches them. So, can I wait? Can you oh, let me form sorry, the question sorry, sorry, before sorry, sorry. you answer it? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, and, and it's, yes, it's easy to say that. It's easy to just like shoot that out. But people say, um, especially you're 11. Mm-hmm. Devin's uh, 15. That it is unsafe and unhealthy. One of the comments that I got, which it's not written down, I just wrote the oh. questions down. One of the comments I got via email was, <laughs> this is how it was phrased. You ready? Mm-hmm. It is dangerous and irresponsible for you to take your children to haunted locations. You don't know what might happen to them. It's no wonder your wife left you. (laughs) So, this is... We found the best one, we found the best one. This is, um, this is, this is kind of going to be the tone of the show. A lot of these are going to seem like they're attacks on me. Um, and I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a, um, a self-deprecating sense of humor, especially when I talk about my books or whatever. Um, and this is going to kind of be 
we're gonna explore some of these because because I don't like my mom was saying, oh my, how could people say these things to you? And I was like, oh, this is so interesting. you put yourself out there, you're gonna get something that's like that. So it is dangerous. I want you to respond to this um, to this quote. It is dangerous and irresponsible for you to take your children out to haunted locations. You don't know what could happen to them. That's probably why your wife left you. <laughs> All right, you don't have to go into the why my wife left me <laughs> part of it. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day coming up. Um, but what do you feel about that idea that it is dangerous and irresponsible for me to take you out? Well... Um, with me to these haunted locations. It's not like you're like, hey, kids, get in the car. Forcing you to go here. Or I'm going to, like, slaughter your family or something. <laughs> Wait, you are my family. Okay. But, like, we choose to go there. If something happens, that's on us because we were like, let's go. Yeah, but you're little. Like, you don't have full... I'm little. That's like saying if you said, like, I want to put a gun to my head. Like, that. I mean... It's my, it's my responsibility as a parent to make sure that you're safe in all situations and things like that. Um, have you ever felt unsafe when we've been out there? No. It's interesting. Today is the one oh, year anniversary I, of us going to the to the bridge in Sarasota, the Amish, the wrong the Amish wrong bridge Amish bridge in Sarasota. Um, but do you ever feel as if you were unsafe or that like, Dad, we really shouldn't be doing this kind of thing? Or the only time I've ever felt that was the second time we went to Carution. Mm -hmm. And we were really deep in the woods. You remember this? Mm -hmm. We were really deep, and we couldn't find the exit. Mm -hmm. And we just kept like walking along the pass, and we couldn't find it. Okay, so you realize that really deep is like I knew where everything was, right? Yeah, but I didn't know that. You didn't know that, so I you felt scared. But and that's kind of you know part of the part of the allure of this is to get a little scared, though, right? Like legend tripping is not about the science of anything. It's about experience and, and I think that fear of being in the woods and that fear of the unknown is part of um is part of the the total package of legend tripping that you need to be a little bit scared of these locations. Sometimes I'm I wonder if I'm not scared enough. Devin asked me the other night if there was any place that I wouldn't go. And of course as we're uh, on these two different chats and, and even if as we're on the the, the one for midnight uh, FM where it's always midnight Feel free to respond to these questions yourself. You know, so like I've got some people who their immediate reaction is like, "Oh my god," um, because of the because, probably because of the wife leaving me thing <laughs> more than the than the actual question. But you know, the, it's not unheard of that people would be upset that I take kids out to haunted locations. Uh, what do you think is the benefit of me doing that? We learn about our history, and we get a little experience in the outside world. People can hear you when you put your hand across. Oh, um, yeah. Young lady. Um, but, like, kids get to learn about history, and they get to experience a little bit of the ghosty stuff, and it's like the, um, it's like <laughs> experience. It's ex ex experience. It's just experience. Yeah. And, you know, part of the reason why I do it is to teach you guys history, is to teach you guys, like, that there is a... Uh, a world outside there, like, get out, experience the world, and these locations have allowed us to go on hikes, they've allowed us to, to go, in, you know, to Tampa, and like, the ocean, stuff like that. Um, um, Margie says, I would rather have my kids with me, showing them and teaching them how to do it, than to have them go out by themselves. Um, and, and I completely agree with that. Uh, that's, that's, I, you know, I don't think it's like, you know, I'm gonna teach my kids about sex because you're gonna hear it in the schoolyard. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Kids have a, a natural, I think, a natural draw to the paranormal and to show them the right way to do things. And also, I would say, it's kind of it with our BuzzFeed conversation, to show them the non-sensationalized version of it um, and to show them the idea of uh, triggers, right? And the idea of this echo wave that we try to get into, which is connecting with people, right? And connecting with what the spirits might... Um, have for us or or what might be there rather than yelling at them rather than being scared of things right do, uh, do you feel like you're scared of the paranormal at all no well 
in terms of not adjusted well to it. Like you've never, my kids have never, and I've been, you know, I've been teaching them one way or another about the paranormal their whole lives, right? Devin could say puckwudgie before he could say other words. And to, yeah, I'm going to read that. So, uh, so to, to have them, my kids have never said, mommy, daddy, there's a, a, a monster under my bed. Right? <laughs> You've probably... never said, like, been scared to go someplace other than being socially awkward and that being, like, a trigger and you didn't want to do that. Like, but not because of genuine fear. Down a little bit more. He's not here. So we can talk about it. He's He's a little bit more of a scaredy cat when it came uh, when, he was a ki- when he was a kid. Kind of. But not after we started doing this. I'm actually scared of the dark, so that's fun. Yeah, aren't we all, though? Because I think there's, like... Yeah, and, and the, the biggest... The boogeyman! He's in the shadows! And the he's biggest thing is... you up. The, the, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask, ask you a follow-up question to this, but the biggest thing for me is, is safety, right? Like, if I genuinely thought that um, things would follow us home or that or we experienced that and it was impacting my kids that I might eject and I might rethink and reconsider whether or not you guys go out with me. But that doesn't happen, or it hasn't happened, that we know of, Right. I'm going to read Jen really quick. I've been experiencing odd phenomena for my entire life, and that's not just... Well, we lived in a weird neighborhood, so uh, so how does that help if you can't put things in context? I love that idea, putting things in context for a child instead of having them struggle along. You're the parent. You're, as mentioned, going to do everything to ensure their safety. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's one of those things where I... I love my kids and I want to spend time with them. And this is an excellent way. Shut up. The first thing he hears when he walks in. I know. And so I want them, I want to spend time with them, right? And this is something that we enjoy doing. So if I can spend time with my kids, which quite frankly, a lot of parents don't, teach them history, get them outside, teach them. Dev, you can be quiet. You don't have to be quiet. We're talking about you. So, and then still kind of produce evidence, you know what I'm saying, still kind of like touch the paranormal, then that seems like a good thing to me. Um, let me ask you this. If you were me, you're the parent. Hi. What, I'm I am the parent. <laughs> I'm what, the parent. Would your, what would your rules be for um, a... Because I want to see if you see what I've done. What are your... What would be your rules for uh, a legend trip that your kids could and could not go on? Well, as long as they don't involve, like, something that's, like, uh-huh, and, like, it's, like, 99.9% of the time, this thing, like, gives you really, like, terrible feelings or, like, nausea or stuff like that. So if it's, like, really bad symptoms of, like, the haunting, I would not want to go because I don't want to put my children in danger. So if there was things within the haunting that, like, physically attacked people or, like... A lot. Cause them d- damage or something yeah. like that. Like, that would be something you would do. Okay, excellent. What else? <laughs> That's it. That's it? That's it. You're like, as long as they don't die, I'm fine <laughs> with it. Do anything. Well, you know, one of the things I do, and if anyone here who has experienced Tripping on Legends and, and as as, like, watched episodes, listened to episodes, we never go in the dark. As long as, like, the location isn't, like, dangerous physically itself. We never go, we never go, despite what... Despite what Ella said, we never go deep into the woods or some location that is inherently dangerous. That's what I just said. I'm I'm telling you my rules. Yeesh, relax. Um, We never have put ourselves in uh, in a situation where I felt like if something human were to attack or like we couldn't, I couldn't defend my children. Um, And we've never, like I said, the first, first thing I said, we've never gone at night. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. The only time we've ever gone someplace at night was when we looked into the Astor Library, and that's because it was a closed location, right? It was mm-hmm. a, an area that, you know, it was just us in there. But other than that, we don't go out at night, right? And I don't know if you've noticed this, that uh, 80% of the time, I don't know if they can hear how loud my dog is licking <laughs> the bowl right yeah. now. Um, we, we don't go, we don't... You have rarely been to a place that I haven't been to before. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. I have. That it's a place that I've scouted before, I've learned before, I've, I've walked the, the cemetery, I've, I've tripped the, the, the road or whatever, and then kind of I understand where it is, what it, the safety is, things like that, and I've brought them. Um, so in terms of exposing them to ideas, 
that's that's a no brainer for me uh, in terms of their safety in the field, physically safety on a human non paranormal level. I feel like I, I do that by setting different standards, and then um, in terms of the paranormal stuff, like in terms of supernatural stuff, things following us, my children becoming possessed, or or opening them up to um, other forces, darker forces that are in the universe. Demons. If, if I thought that that was a genuine thing that could happen, or I saw it happening, I would definitely back them off. Or not. The power of Christ compels you! Right, like, you know, and, and we don't... <laughs> which kind of leads to the next question. Of teens. Which, which, is, um, which is not down here, but oh, which is man. something I'm asked often, uh, especially in radio interviews, which is, uh, what do you do to protect yourself? Self. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, and, you know, that's... Paper towels real quick. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's an interesting question because um, I'm going to start off by saying that I am, I am not, unfortunately, I am not a man of faith. Like, you were just joking about that, that power of Christ compels you stuff. Yeah. And the unfortunate thing is I do this, but I'm, I'm not a man of faith. And, it's, and I'm not nearly as uh, attacking of religion as some people I know or something like that. I just don't have a lot of faith in things. And so it's really difficult for me to buy into protection, right? Because most of it is some kind of faith-based approach or a little thing you do or thing you carry. I used to carry holy water with me. Really? Not in a water gun like Ryan, but I used <laughs> to carry holy water with me. I used to carry this ginger spray uh, because I read in, in a conjuring book um, that, like How to Conjure Spirits, that ginger was a repellent. Um, but I don't... I, the, the easy question is, like, the easy answer is I don't protect myself. Um, that said, I don't think I've ever really been, except for a few different times, had something follow me home been attacked in the field, uh, and this is both as an investigator and as a legend tripper, what do you feel about uh, protection? I think it's important, at least to have like a little bit. Yeah? Well, what do you do to protect yourself? Do you just rely on big old teddy bear pop to teddy bear make sure you're safe? Pie. I mean, like, because it's not like you go, I am now wearing a cross, or I'm, you know, like, how? Take I it. some candle things. What did you say? Do you know I light a candle when we come home from running trips? Do you really? I do. I did not know that. You will now you Because do. you're always lighting candles. <laughs> I'm always setting fire to stuff. I'm kidding. Um, why? What, what do you think that does? Because I do the same thing like when I'm trying to meditate, when I'm trying to find a spiritual center. Um, why do you think that is? That you are compelled to light a candle for safety? Well, fire, but... Um, what do you think it does for you? It cleanses because I like the smell... Mm -hmm. And it's the fire is calming. Fire, fire is calming, and right? And fire is dangerous, so uh -huh. it repels any bad stuff. So you think something coming for your soul is going to be scared of the... Yes. Hmm, that's an interesting it's like connection Hades. there. <laughs> um, Hades is calm. So no. in terms of protection, no. in terms of protection, I, I, I haven't done that. Uh, I think I've told the story before, but I'll tell again. <laughs> of when I went to, I think it was Dungeon Rock. And I went with uh, Ron Kolick and the New England Ghost, New England Ghost Group. I can't remember what they're called. New England Ghost, the New England Ghost Project, the New England Ghost Project. And um, I was on my way home. We had gone to Dungeon Rock. I was on my way home, and it had started to rain. It was one of those really soft rains that, like, your wipers aren't good. Like, it's it's like in between the levels of the wipers. So you really can't get it clean. And, I, and my whole window was fucking up, and it was like I couldn't figure it out what was going on. And then I realized, um, as I'm going through the storm, which was getting worse and worse, and I couldn't get my window clean, that Ron had put with his, what he calls his secret sauce, or his special sauce, he had put a cross on my windshield to protect me uh, because of what we had just been through at, at Dungeon Rock. And, of course, he almost killed me because of it. So Wow, thanks, Ron. You know, it's, it's interesting because as we got more and more into things, Natalie became more and more concerned uh, with protection as well because she would then have activity in her house and things like that. And, you know, I wish maybe that I had had her faith and could kind of find 
some kind of thing to protect us, but overall, no protection. Um, once again, I'm quoting Jen He in the chat room. Well, uh, if it's generally accepted that faith in those holy and blessed items people use, then believing a candle can repel bad things would work the same way. No? Excellent. Yeah, I think it is. And, and that's always, I shouldn't say I don't go out without protection. We always used to say this, is that uh, our protection was intent. That we went out, come closer. We went out <laughs> with a good heart. We went out with the best of intentions. We weren't provokers. And so there was some kind of purity in what we did. And we were ho always hoped that that purity and that intent, that good intent, would kind of carry us through the day, which is similar to this idea that this mouse, if my intent is that it's a holy relic or that it's, it's sacred and that it does something, could possibly keep me safe in those moments. So I would be interested, um, and we and we tried to do this a few different times over over that time period, which is, you know, I would love for people to send me what they use to protect themselves. And it doesn't even need to be when you go out in the field, right? It can be what you use when you um, are just trying to keep your house uh, clean, not your house clean, clean, because my house is never clean, but, you know, in terms of spiritually clean, what you used in terms to repel bad things, if you investigate or if you don't investigate, lucky charms you think uh, are work to, to keep you safe. I would love to get a list of those things. I think we should have a whole episode where we just cover um, repellents and protective things. What do you think? Silver bullets. Yes, if we're going to run into werewolves or vampires, then we would need silver bullets. Pow, 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 pow. Um, this kind of fits into the next thing. Ready? Yeah. What the hell happened to the home haunted? What the hell did happen to that? You were too scared to do the doll thing. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna have um, we're gonna have Ella. He was so scared to start, do that. Wait, that stop, I the doll stop. to my friend. We're, that's because you were too cheap to buy Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing down Sage, Palo Santo, which I don't know what that is, and Candles, which were all given to us by Margie. Now, what I want, Ella, is I want you to not be you for a moment. That was rude, but you understand what I meant. And calmly try to communicate to me why you think I canceled the Home Haunted. Now... If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, we did an episode, which I think is, it's actually one of our most popular episodes, like if you go online, which is really interesting. Uh, we did an episode called The Home Haunted because we couldn't leave the house because of uh, quarantine, things like that. And we talked about different urban legends, especially modern urban legends from kids, uh, that are tweens, that... Um, Kind of are pushing forward weird, the creepy things. Can I the uh, yeah, it would be, I believe, in my room in the wood bookcase, like on my okay. desk. Um, she's gonna go get the book while I talk about the thing. So it was a really great episode in that we got to talk about the generation gap, and we got to talk about um, why there are kind of these paranormal beliefs that you know these are these new stories that are coming out, these new urban legends for uh, different things that you can do in the home, right? So we brought to the table Bloody Mary. We brought to the table, um, I brought to the table, I should say, uh, you know, uh, stiffer, why is a feather stiff as a board, kind of the paranormal aspects of that. Ouija boards, which were kind of controversial at the time. Some people were like, how could you dare do Ouija boards with your daughter, Charlie Charlie? Uh, and then we kind of got into some more, um, and here's, here's the interesting thing about it. It was more controversial from my perspective and more common from her perspective. So for her, did you find it? No. No, okay. So that would not be the first time that a book was not supposed to be there when we wanted it to be. Um, Yay! Do you remember the name of the book? Ghost of the Machine? No, that's, no, a, that's, that's her website. Her website was Ghost of the Machine. Scary Games. Scary, no. scary game, uh, whatever it was. The name of the website, if you want to check out some of the stories the that were in the there, machine. was ghostofthemachine.com. Um, she's got you looking it up as I'm talking. Yeah. How about if I look it up? Mm, I got it. Because I want your perspective on why I canceled. Um, then the plan was what we were doing was the plan was 
we were going to do one night, because I, I have my kids 50% of the time. So in consecutive nights that I had you, we were going to do each of the home haunted. So what we were going to do is the Ouija board, which we did. Charlie Charlie, which we did. We were going to do Bloody Mary. Did we, we did Bloody Mary, right? So Bloody Mary. So those videos are all Maybe up there. Bloody Mary. Okay. Then we were going to do the Midnight Man. This is the, this is the stuff, but it doesn't have what it's called. We were going to do the Midnight Man. We were going to do uh, One Man Hide and Seek. And we were going to do this thing called Three Kings. Dangerous Games to Play in the Dark. Ga Dangerous Games to Play in the Dark is the name. I'll put that in the, in the show notes. So people, if they want to check that book out, because it's a fun book. So in your perspective, why didn't we get to Three Kings, One Man, um, Hide and Seek, and The Midnight Man? Because obviously your whole thing is safety, right? So those things are either a you... Like, if one thing's go wrong, one thing goes wrong, the whole thing goes downhill. So, like, for example, if there was one called Blue Baby Baby Blue, and if you drop the, the ghost of the baby three times, then the door... Wait, drop the ghost of the baby? Yeah, like you Did we to, talk like, about this one? No, we did not. Okay, because um, I have no idea about dropping ghosts of But, like, if you drop the ghost of the baby, the door will lock, and the mother will come for you. Like, the ghost of... The mother mm -hmm. of the ghost baby. And in that circumstance, there's nothing you can do. Just because you accidentally made a mistake. Right, and... It's like putting your whole safety on the line. And that was kind of the... Alright, I understand the, the dangers of... And Midnight Man, too. Like, Go ahead, continue. Like, if, you, if your candle blows out... 10 seconds to relight it. If it doesn't relight, sit on the floor, salt circle right now, or you will die. Yeah, and and the other part and the other part of it was is that you had to do it for an extended period of time. It was very specific. Um, but as I was exploring those in my mind, as I was going through those stories in my mind, you know, it's kind of like you read it, you 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 ooh, good to see the sleepy time teas kicking into you. <laughs> you you read it and you scan it and you go, ooh, that's a cool legend. And you're like, that's okay, so put a star next to that one. Right? And then you uh, read it in more detail, which is what we did in that episode, is we explored those legends in more detail, what they might mean, things like that. And what happened was, is even as we were telling them, they were getting um, their game, right? Their urban legends, their game. Uh, even Ouija board, I think, is, is some, and Charlie Charlie less, but Ouija board. There are a certain level of spirit communication. You let, you let something in. Um, people can debate whether or not it's a game or not. Those seem to me uh, more along the lines of conjuring. Things, right? Uh, you were specifically calling upon anything to come into your house. Now, I understand that there is an element of that to Ouija board. And I understand, or spirit boards, talking boards. I understand there's an element of that to going out in the field and asking for an EVP, right? Uh, or getting someone to talk to or something like that. These were ritualistic conjurings and ritualistic, you were essentially invoking something dark to enter your house and giving it permission to, and then being like, wee hee hee, it's a game, get in Chuck E. Cheese. Um, what are you doing? Stop staring like that. You're freaking me out. Remember when I used to write, like, Aaron Mankey? Shut up. <laughs> um, and so, to me, it felt kind of like... Like a really dark kind of witchcraft. Or a really dark kind of... Of... of elemental conjuring. Demon, demon conjuring. Demon calling. That, to me, was, like, over the line. Like, right? Like, I can't say I'm protecting you. I can't say that I'm, I'm trying to be as healthy with you guys as possible and protect you, and then be like, demon, enter my house. Like, <laughs> demon, enter my house. Regardless of whether it's a game, that's kind of how these things work sometimes, right? Like, convince enough people that it's a game, and you can slowly uh, infiltrate their lives. And we did that, remember we did that whole list of things that make you susceptible to Satan? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's and like, I like, do like you, all of them. Do you play the Ouija board? Do you do yoga? Do you do this? Do and we, we kind of laughed at, we kind of laughed at even the idea of 
certain activities doing that, you know, like will Harry Potter or watching Buffy lead to, to, to the dark people coming to get you? And we kind of laughed about it, but it is like a genuine thing of like um, this idea of you're inviting dark things into your house to play with them as if they were a game. And that's the, that to me was a little bit over the line. Were you pissed about that? Were you pissed about that? About what? About canceling those, those things? Honestly, no. Pourquoi? They were scary. You were scared by them a little bit? Uh, just, just a little bit, because I don't like, I, we both didn't like the part in The Midnight Man where you had to prick your finger for the blood. Yeah, the blood, the blood that, rituals. That's where we draw the line, man. Forget the fact draw. that I don't like to be, I don't like pricks. Um. That's like sealing your name. Um. Do but the work. idea of like I have blood, blood work seven times fight me. What is that? I have blood work seven times. I know. Yeah, exactly, and it's horrible, right? Like it's, it's terrible. Like, I, hate I have it. a fear of needles. I have a fear of being cut. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, it was over the line, and we we had said we were going to substitute some of that with other things, but it it still was not. Um, do you want to get to the puck wedgie? Sure. Um, we're about halfway through, so it might as well tackle the puck wedgie one. Because it was the one that people responded to the most. Shall I read it again? <laughs> yes, in all its Shall glory. Shall I read it again? Okay. In all its glory. This was uh, on October 5th, 2020, and I blocked out the person who sent it. If the person who sent it is around, please call. Like, call. Or, or if anyone else has a question for us, you can call. The number is 813-418-6822. Um, feel free to call and ask a question that you have of Trippy on Legends. You can post it in Instagram uh, or you can post it on Facebook Live as well. Um, here is what, this was a review. And the funny thing is it was a review and yet they gave me two out of five stars. So they didn't even give me one star, which was interesting. Wow. To call yourself the Puck Wedgie guy and claim any credit for spreading the Puck Wedgie legend is stealing the cultural property of the Wampanoag people. Who were the victims of genocide by Europeans? Do you understand what any of that means? No. No, okay. Which word don't you I understand? Do, I understand. You know what genocide is, right? No, genocide. I know what all those words mean, but the way they phrase it. The way they phrase it? So essentially what this uh, woman, I think it was a woman, based on what the name was. Person. Um is saying that, how dare I call myself the Puck Wedgie guy and claim that I have any credit, like claim that the spread of the Puck Wedgie, Wedgie legend was at all um, my responsibility. Um, and then accused me of stealing, essentially being like, I stole their culture. I stole Wampanoag's culture. Um, and that is a bad thing, especially considering they were the victims of genocide, like what mass killing of their culture from Europeans. So, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have thoughts on that? Like, is it okay for, um, for a white guy from Boston living in Florida to call himself the Puck Wedgie guy and to take credit for or talk about um, him being vital in spreading the, the story of the Puck Wedgie. Well, I think it's okay as long as you don't go too far with it. What do you mean by that? Because some people, hubris. It's like hubris. So like they, hubris? Hubris, that one. Okay. And um, <laughs> it's like you can do it, but you can... Do that kind of thing. You can call yourself the Puck Wedgie guy. As long as you don't get too into it, like, I'm better than the Wampanoag who were slaughtered. Like, and I just take Sorry, I thought you had something else to add. Their entire <laughs> there was culture. a dramatic pause there. Their entire culture. Um, okay, so so first of all, I, sh I should probably clarify, I didn't come up with the nickname, right? Uh, the nickname was given to me by Dave Schrader. Dave Schrader. I was just, I'm actually, I'll be on his show. We taped it, but he's going to play it. Um... We're, he's going to play it around Valentine's Day because of Haunted Love, Valentine's Day. And uh, I, I had to remind him, I'm like, actually, because he called me the Puck Wedgie guy again, and I'm like, you're the one that made up the name. We were standing from here to the TV with 
Robert, right? Robert's right there. Uh, Dave came into an auditorium. We were both at a conference. I was not speaking at it. And from across the room, he shouted, Hey, Bukwudgie guy! Bukwudgie guy! And then when I was on his show, he called me that again. And so it just became like kind of like a funny little thing. Um, so the nickname is the nickname, right? And the nickname is not to minimize anything. But let's talk about me taking credit for the spread of the story. I did. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I hate to say it, but first of all, I don't see many Wampanoag stepping forward to share this story. Um, I don't see many hiding it. Like, it's not like it's like actively being, although some would say not responding to my calls for interviews, things like that is, is a part of it. Um, legitimately, we have uh, Joe Citro writing about it. We have Obviously, um, um, uh, Gene Fritz writing about it in the in the in the kids book. We have Lauren Coleman writing about it. Lauren Don't. Coleman. We have uh, <laughs> we have the the book about the ones from Indiana. No one was reading those books, right? Except for Joe Citro's Passing Strange is a pretty popular and book. Lauren Coleman. Right. Well, I I've yet to find where Lauren <laughs> Coleman wrote about it. I think it was more on his website. <laughs> like I can't find it referenced in a book. And I could be wrong about that. If, uh, if you know what book it's in, please let me know. But, like, it wasn't until Dark Woods that people really started to talk about it. And to be honest with you, it wasn't until it was on Paranormal State that people really started to talk about it. Both of those things were driven by me. So the idea that it was um, spread, that I, I have some role to spread in it, is true, right? Um, the, the idea that... In those early days before things shifted, especially on Wikipedia, those were my quotes, right? Those were my stories that were being shared, uh, the ones that I collected. They weren't my stories. I just collected them and put them out there. Those were um, my, that was my research, right? Phrased my way, copy and pasted, copy and pasted, copy and pasted. So legitimately, like, I was kind of important to the spread of it. You know what I'm saying? So screw you. I was. Sorry. That said, um, what did it say? My feet are crusty. Your feet are always crusty. Thanks, Dad. Thank you for ruining the momentum of this. I had this whole thing planned okay, out. Cool. You're ruining my flow. You're ruining my flow. You could have not said what. I could have. What? Okay. What are you doing? I'm sitting over here so I don't interrupt your time. The bigger part of it is, right? So that's kind of arrogant for me to say, but whatever. The bigger part of it is, which I think addresses the, the more important answer to that, the more, more important aspect of that question is, I, first of all, I didn't call myself the puck guy, it was put on me. I did spread it. Third and most important thing is, I don't know anyone that talks about them. I don't know anyone that pushes the idea out there, that tells the stories, that, it, that doesn't reference, just like I just did, doesn't reference my research, right? I give credit to the Wampanoag. I give credit to, to Joe Citro. I give credit to Gene Fritz. I give credit to Lauren Coleman. I give credit to the people who have come before me with this. So I'm not saying I own the legend. I'm saying here's the legend, and I'm getting the legend out there, and here are the steps along the way. And I think that's totally different, right? Like, I think if anything, because I often talk about when Pukwudgies, the symbolism of them, in terms of the losing of the culture of the Wampanoag, right? And how it, how the, the, especially the stories that are published out there, the big stories that are published about them, coincide with the arrival of the, of the settlers, right? The, 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 um, the famine and disease that wiped them out right before that. Like, these stories coincide. I'm the one who's giving the Wampanoag a stage for their history to be known. Now, is it, is it my place to do that? You know what I'm saying? As a as an Italian American, right? Who knows? Who's to say? I'm getting the stories out there though, and I'm crediting my sources, and I'm giving a nod to Wampanoag culture. So I don't think that I am stealing their culture. I don't think that I am uh, uh, um, basking in the glory of their genocide. I think that I'm the person who's out there talking about them. 
right? And oftentimes they're not very vocal about their legend and their history because they're protected and they're, they're kind of have been burned too many times. And I'm the voice that's out there. And I don't claim to be a Wampanoag. I don't claim to be anything more than I am. But I am the one who is saying that I am a link in this chain, right? I don't claim to be the chain. I claim to be a link in the chain. And I show people as much of the chain as I can. You have no response to that? You're looking at me, is it like... I have something in my eye. She has something in her eye. Is Are you crying? Because that was a pretty emotional little speech right there. <laughs> that was... You have to look here. That was really good, Dad. Okay. Thank, at least Darth Vader over there is acknowledging the hard work that I put into this. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and you know what? Like, most people hadn't heard about them from me. And... and and for I've never said like here's a story that I know and that I own. So that's that's kind of I think that's all where I want to go with that. If people have questions about that or people want me to go more about that, we can. And you know what? There are a ton of interviews that I've given out there where I talk about this kind of thing and, and kind of make my stand uh, and kind of talk about my position in the history of that story. I know I joke all the time that J.K. Rowling owes me money. And I know that there are episodes out there of different shows where I have kind of blasted her for her treatment of the Pukwudgies. But if you know her story and you know the way she's treated the Pukwudgies, which is not horrible, um, but it's not in line with the lore of them, at least I'm kind of giving credit and kind of making it as much as I possibly can authentic. Next one. Uh, that's like saying a reporter in the media is stealing culture for doing a story on a local cultural festival. Right, and I do, and I, thank you, Jen, I, I like the way that you put that, and I do put myself forward as the storyteller of these and not the originator of them. So, you know, I feel like I, I do that. I'm just going to take you out of the camera completely because no one wants to see you. So if you want to be back on the show, you've got to get closer to me. Excellent point. Um, the next question. Ready? Which one do you want to go with? Uh, your student's talking to you, Dad. Hello, how are we doing, guys? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, which one are we going to go with? Blair Witch. The Blair Witch. Okay. All right, so this is probably even more controversial than, uh, than the Puck Wedgie story in terms of that, like, th this is a lot of, this is moving parts to it. And the question is, is... And so, Della, I'm glad that you're, you're here for this because you've heard some of this in private because I usually don't like to take things to the public with, like this. But um, is the Blair Witch, uh, was the Blair Witch inspired by the Hog Island Swamp Witch? Oh. Uh. Now, why do you say no, Ella? By the way... Oh, I said oh. By the way, if you don't start doing that, the next package is coming. And if you get more too many behind, I'm not. I'm going to cancel the subscription to it. Okay. So you've just got some work you don't to have do. To help me. <coughs> Those of you guys who don't know, for Christmas, <coughs> say it. I need coffee. Say. Uh, for Christmas, I got a Hunt a Killer, but it's Blair Witch Project Edition. Wow, that was really you. Really, you really summed that up quickly. Nice job. I would have taken. It would have taken me like an hour to do what you just did. <laughs> You're like Hunt a Killer, Blair Witch Edition. Go. <laughs> right, so it's if you know Hunt a Killer, it's like a, a a monthly thing you get. It's a case you have to solve it. She really she asked for it for Christmas. So I was like, oh wow, that's really cool. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. And then and something we can do together. And then she, I saw that there was a Blair Witch edition. And my obsession with the Blair Witch. What did you think of the movie, by the way? Talk to the mic. People want to know. Wow, I wow, yeah. Can you do more than wow? No. Wow. Okay. Excellent. Well, <laughs> I know. I'm so disappointed. Glad I have you on. So it was it was uh, interesting. Swamp witch on Hog Island here in um, Florida, and that that story, which really is.
And it said that um, that story was the inspiration for the movie The Blair Witch Project. Um, if you listen to the producers and the directors of the film, I'll say writers too, like, because they were, um, it, yes, they were influenced heavily by the Bell Witch. They were influenced heavily by another legend that happened 